What's up everybody, Captain Awesome here, and today we are doing a new uh, series called Snacking with Captain, and it's all about gamer snacks for alternative healthy gaming snacks that take next to no time to make. Today, we are starting with Captain Awesome's famous bruschetta. So very basic ingredients, which you can find at your local food store or super center. Our recipe will consist of five Roman tomatoes, five cloves of garlic, one white or red onion, one lemon, and for additional crunch, you can either have two sticks of celery or two to three sticks of green onion. You will also need your olive oil, your lime juice for extra zest. It is my secret ingredient in this whole entire recipe. Some people can usually choose with just lemon. I like to put lime, but I've started really enjoying the lemon and lime. We need our salt, we need our pepper, and we need our orange seasoning salt. Followed by what you, what we call cilantro, but I like to refer to it as razzergan. Now, I've cut them all up for you. Prep time takes about five to 10 minutes. Um, everything is cut into big chunks, as you can tell. For me, myself, this is the way I like to do it because depending on the processor you have, you will need to get one between anywhere between five and 19.99 at your local Wally World. I got myself this one. This is my third edition chopper. It is an Oster. Oster. Comes big uh, 32 ounce container. Nice beautiful blade. Can't go wrong. I used to do it with a pump chopper and decided that it would be better if I went electric. So we're gonna start very simple. We're going to do a layer of tomato. We're going to toss in a couple of the green onions because we want the crunch at the bottom. Oh, drop the piece on the floor. Grab some onion. I am going to open it up and spread it out because I personally don't like chunks of onion. I like it fully spread once it's chopped. All right. Then we're going to add just a little bit of the garlic and we're going to re-layer it. All right. So we're going to go more tomatoes, more tomatoes. Now, if you are to do this with a smaller chopper, you're going to want to do it in parts. So we're going to do majority tomato, second majority will be onion, followed by garlic and crunch. You pump it and you continue. You'll have to do that two, three times I'm, uh, based on the size of your chopper. And then you could just have multiple uh, Combine them all into one bowl, and there you go, it works just as well. You don't, also, you don't need a chopper if you are a pro smith, and you can just. I cannot. Voila. And I'm gonna add more. Now there is gonna be some leftover. I do like my garlic. I'm going to double check and see what I am missing. Okay, seems to be all right. Maybe add a little more onion at the top. A couple more of the tomatoes. Mm, love me my aromas. Okay, leave a little bit for your blade, of course. And we start with a half lemon. Try to take out the seeds before um, you get to squeezing it and prepping it. Otherwise, it could be tiring to go looking for the seeds, especially when they look like the garlic pieces. Make sure you squeeze that. You can use a, a, a juicer to get all the lemon juice out, but then it's as per, as per flavor. Um, it's whatever you prefer. I do not normally use amounts, as you can tell. It's all by taste. Everybody has a different palate. Everybody has a different taste. What is key important though, is the combination. Then we add our cilantro right on top. Now, why did I put the lemon in front of the cilantro, uh, before the cilantro, instead of putting cilantro through the whole thing? Well, yes, it's going to mix, 
but I found over the time that the cilantro likes to take the flavor of the lemon if you pour the lemon on top, which removes that oomph that it gives. Again, olive oil based on taste. Some people love olive oil, some people don't. I don't really like the taste, but I love it as the mixture. Um, so I do use, just like that, a couple spins. Very easy, very simple. This is what you're going to be left with. Now, I'm going to use my lemon, lime, just squeeze a couple in the corners, just so it's at the bottom. It's the way my chopper works. Salt. Yes, salt is important. It is the preservative um, that makes everything better. No salt, no preservative. Spoils in like two, three days. And it tastes good. Okay. This one you gotta be a little more careful with because seasoning salt does throw in a lot of salty flavor. Um, cayenne flavor as well. It's not spicy, it's just flavoring. For people who are worried about spice, it's not like paprika, it's not like actual cayenne peppers or chilies or whatever. It's just a nice, strong salt. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. Now that we have our bowl all set up, we're going to be closing it up. Very simply, just like that. Pull out our extension. So the way this one works is actually pretty cool. So you find the, the grooves, there are matching grooves. Voila. All right, now I'm going to give it jumps in this one. Just like if it was a hand chopper where you go chop, chop, chop. With this one, we are, I'll be doing the same thing because I want those chunks at the bottom to cycle to the top and not turn into mush while the top ones stay, stay big. I want it all in chunks. So learn your chopper, people. Learn your processors. Learn your, that is the one thing about cooking. You've got to know how your devices work. Notice how I'm pumping, as I said. Now with this one, I do want to make sure that everything's okay. So I come in, and because I have the room, I just mix it up with my spoon to bring the bigger pieces down to the bottom where the blades are, the tops at the top, very basic. And we go for a second round. Okay, see, super simple, going to check. Now, this is specifically for me, not for a restaurant, so you will get to see me try it directly. Nope. So this is where you make your adjustments. I feel like it is short. Short on quite a bit. To taste. That sounds a little extra. It needs that zest and it doesn't have it quite yet. So, we will take out the seeds that just popped in by accident because I don't want to be eating those. My wife does not want to be eating those. Okay, let's see the mixture, how it's chopped it nice and small. So the next time we're going to do this, we're going to be careful with the blade so that it just mixes it. So it mixes it and less so chops it. Voila. I am no Martha Stewart by any means, but I am the Wasteland Stewart. Voila. Okay. Now I'm going to mix it because it looks like there's a lot of juice at the top when you first get it because vegetables always produce a lot of liquid. And that's the secret. And making sure to just chop and not run the machine. Now, I'm going to try it again. Perfect. I would like to add, however, at this stage, if your seasoning is wrong, rather than liquids or extra um, vegetables, what you do want to do is you want to grab your seasoning, you do want to put it in, 
Now, I mean, instead of mixing it with a chopper, just use your spoon. Super easy, super simple. All right. So for our next step, we're actually going to move over to our new set of ingredients, which in this case, we've got our formula. I like to use either the Furlani garlic toast right here, one bag for maybe say total of eight, uh, four for myself, four for the wife, always perfect. Or here's a little secret, y'all Costco shoppers, at Costco, if you go to the back where the bakery is and you ask for their little ciabatta buns, they'll give you a box for $30 with buns this big. Small little bun, let it sit out. 200 and some buns for $30. All you gotta do is cook them, let them sit out for four hours, whatever, uh, to, to rise, and then you put them in the oven for a total of 20 minutes. Very simple, amazing and delicious buns. Kids love them for their lunches at school as well. That being said, I prefer garlic bread uh, for the most part, so we've got our garlic bread. Then we have our mozzarella cheese. Some people will argue, oh, I like to use cheddar, I like to use marble, which is cheddar, or any other type. To that, I say go for it. It's all in the flavor. However, mozzarella is the pizza mozzarella that likes to melt properly. If you would like to make a combo of cheese, it's probably the best way to go. Or if you would like to add Parmesan or goat cheese, do that at the end. Ah, uh, did I say goat cheese? Eh, that could be good. Uh, I was talking about feta. However, goat cheese could be too. So goat, feta, or Parmesan, you put on at the end. All right. Now, it's going to take me a couple seconds. I did not make my cheese. But I would like to explain why my cheese is this small and I'm not just using the block like every other person out there normally that just takes the cheese block and goes up, 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 up. The reason for that is I would like small chunks of cheese so that the pattern, the, the grain or the intertwining actually works better than long strands. Also, you get a lot more cheese for your buck, a lot more spread for your buck when it is in smaller pieces. Why? I don't know. It's what I've noticed based on cooking forever. I do prefer my smaller pieces. Now that we have our cheese, our recipe yet again, and our bread. Very simple. We turn the oven on to 350. Then we let it preheat. You can do that right before you start chopping up. And you'll see by the time you're ready, it goes right in. Sometimes I don't even wait if the oven is fully heated or not. It doesn't matter. And I'll explain to you why in a minute. So, we separate our frozen buns. Frozen or thawed, perfectly fine. They all work the same. It just depends how easy you separate them. See? I'm gonna give this one to my wife. Don't tell her. All right. We've got... There we go. I had garlic butter all over my hands. So, there we go. Very simple. Three oven at 350. We spoon a spoon on each bread. That's what we start with. And again, hold off on the juice. The juice will stay at the bottom. No. There we go. Okay. Now you see I have lots left, which is exactly what I want. Because once you start spreading it, you don't want an overbearing layer of food, but you want to make sure that there are chunks on all corners of your bread. Voila! We got this. And then we sprinkle our cheese on top evenly. Whatever you used, I used half a block of mozzarella cheese. Now I'm not gonna lie. Everything here in today's recipe has been bought at Wally World. Very simple, very easy, always on sale. The bread is maybe $2.97. Now I am in Canadian prices. The bread is $2.97. The Roma tomatoes end up being 97 cents a pound. So I'm looking at five tomatoes, you're looking at about a dollar. The cheese is the most expensive for two for $9 or $5.77 each. I do use Great Bow. I am trying to not say the entire words, just in case of copyright issues and all that stuff, so I hope you understand. 
So now that my oven is ready at 350, I'm gonna put these in for five minutes. That's it, just five minutes. Then that will give enough time for the cheese to start melting. Um, I have done it in the past where if you would prefer a crunchier bread, put in the bread while the oven heats up. That's the secret. Put the bread in the oven while it heats up. Take it out when you're ready to put it on or when the oven beeps to let you know that it's preheated. Don't wait longer. Only the up to 350 uh, cooking direction is the timer for the bread toasting. As you can see, very beautiful, very amazing, and ready to go. I'm gonna put those in the oven for my five minutes. Once you put it in the oven at 350 for five minutes, you're going to want to put it to broil for three minutes. Base it on your oven. My old oven used to be three minutes and 32 seconds. This current oven is three minutes, and then it uh, tends to burn the cheese. So it's all by preference. This is just a guideline. So you can't find a place to write down all these recipe instructions and everything. Hmm. Well, my fellow gamer, do I have something for you on top of all of this? Right here. My very own, created by Captain Awesome, Overseer's Notebook. A personal journal for anybody to write down their notes as desired. We've got our special loadout section, and then 74 pages of blank lines for you to be able to jot down your notes nice and neat, as well as a warning at the end letting you know that you need a new notebook. Beautiful. 760 on the Amazon market. There's the oven. So now we look inside our oven and you can see they're coming out great. So you're going to want to hit broil. I like to put on high. Timer. Three minutes. Okay, so now time to take them out. Oh. And voila! Perfectly delicious Captain Awesome's bruschetta. Want to hear a little bonus? When you cook those with the cheese and everything else, and once you broil it, you get an additional snack as the cook. Nobody else can have this unless your kid catches you. Cheese chips. So good. Well, there you have it, folks. A beautiful and delicious bruschetta. Total time, 20 minutes. Total cost, $10. I don't know, but if you ask me, this is a lot better, tastier, fresher, and easier than going driving all the way to the MC Resto, getting myself a big M and bringing it back home to then get on the game. I could eat it on the way, I could eat it here, sure. The time it takes to go there and come back, the time it takes to make this and get it ready, totally different. I could load up my game, get my drink, have that made, in the oven, ready to go before my live streams even go. Well, that about wraps up this recipe. Hope you guys enjoy. Leave a like and a comment if you guys are interested in this recipe, as well as hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And don't forget to tell your friends. It's always nice. Other than that, have a good one, everybody. See ya.